the weird weapons of World War One. Last week, we made a video about just the standard weapons, the things people expect to be involved in World War I. But today, we're going to explore some of the more obscure things, the things the history books don't tell you about. There's some crazy stuff in here, and they really show the improvisation that people used when it came to fighting. First up, we're looking at close combat with this. This is called the Gauntlet Dagger. This design was created by the French and British forces and was recorded as used in the later stages of the war around 1917. Designed specifically for use in the trenches, I mean, you needed to be very close to the person if you wanted to kill them with these things, the tool was made out of a light sheet of steel as the outer shell, and then a small blade fitted into the crack in the end. Inside the glove, there was a crossbar that the user could grip and hold onto, and clearly, this weapon isn't for the faint-hearted. I, for one, would not want to be wearing these, knowing I was about to run into an enemy trench and start stabbing all the enemies that I could see, especially as the enemy might be ready for me armed with rifles and pistols that could easily take me down. Although, a wicked piece of improvisation, I'm sure just made out of something that was on the ground, these things probably killed multiple soldiers during World War I. Next, and this is probably my favourite from the list of five that we've got, we have the Feathered Flechette. This small, deadly dart was designed to be dropped from high above the battlefield and hit the gathered troops and cavalry below down in the trenches. The feather gave the dart more stability as it fell from aeroplanes so it would travel a more direct route. It could get caught by a gust of wind and blown off course. The darts were sharpened at one end, measured about 6 inches in length, and were packed up and placed above a hole in the aircraft. Once the pilot released them by pulling a string inside the aircraft, they would fall to the ground, spreading out as they fell, inflicting a lot of damage if they were aimed correctly. The Germans employed this tactic much more so than the Allied forces, with the Allies saying they wouldn't resort to such tactics, saying they were ungentlemanly. You couldn't hear the attack coming, and they inflicted such heavy wounds. Also, their severe lack of accuracy meant sometimes if they were aimed incorrectly or poorly, they may end up hitting their own troops rather than the enemy. How about something explosive then? Let's talk about grenades. While most armies had their own standard issue grenades like the British No. 15 Ball Grenade and the German Model 24, but it was the Australians who came up with perhaps the most interesting design of them all. I present to you the Jam Tin Grenade, an improvised explosive made of, you guessed it, a jam jar. Anzacs would fill their empty rations of jam tins full of explosive powder and rig them to charges so they could be used in combat. They were created out of necessity as equipment couldn't be made fast enough to supply the soldiers. It wasn't just jam jars and in the picture that I've shown you I think there's a milk jar there as well. But it was common that they'd attach the grenade to a pressure device and once stepped on it had explode effectively becoming a landmine. They'd place them on dead bodies of soldiers as well so if enemies came along looting after they'd move on they'd get blown to pieces. While not strictly a weapon, the use of camouflage was huge during World War I, but none more so than it was on the dreadnought battleships out at sea. Dazzle Camouflage, as it was named, was pioneered by British marine artist Norman Wilkinson and was created in response to the power of the German submarines. They kept sinking the British ships. Large objects out on a body of water, like these massive dreadnoughts, were extremely difficult to conceal, and instead, Wilkinson employed blocky designs to obscure the shape, size and distance of the ship, which made it a lot harder for the German submarines to know where to aim at them and when to attack. Although the amount of ships lost after the camo's introduction did reduce, not all credit can be taken by Wilkinson, but damn, can you imagine the colour? It must have been insane. 
And lastly, what might not seem like a crazy gadget now, but back then was revolutionary, we have the flare pistol. This invention saw no man's land lit up brightly at night, enabling people to see a little bit better and what they were aiming at. The downside is, not only did your army have a better line of sight, but it also helped the enemy. Fired from a brass gun, the white light would hang high in the air over the battle and became particularly useful for snipers who might be reconning the area for movement. During the day, the bright white colour was replaced with actual colours to help signal movement across the front. Many of the inventions listed here were created not only during World War I, but because they had to be. 1914 to 1918 was an era of innovation as much as it was an era of war, with armies all around the world creating and improving weaponry, many ideas we still see today. Thank you very much for watching, let me know down below any interesting weapons you know about from World War I, and while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.